Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli here. Welcome back to another episode of In The Shop. And I've got a timely one for you today. In this episode, we're gonna talk about the best baits for big springtime bass. Um, this is a great time of the year. Things are warming up, fish are moving shallow, fish are getting ready to spawn, and the bass are at their biggest they will be all year, especially the females. Think about it. In the spring, they're eating, and as they're eating, those eggs are popping out. So your chances of catching a big bass, I'm talking five, six, seven, eight, up to 10 pounds, your chance of catching a big one is at its best in the spring. So today, I'm gonna to give you my top four best baits for big springtime bass. And keep that in mind. You know, I'm basing this off of about 30 years of springtime fishing. For the past 30 years, every spring, these four baits consistently catch the biggest bass of the year for me. Um, and I gotta start with my number one. My number one lure, when I look back on spring bass fishing from the mid 80s to now, that's a long time, I've caught more big bass in the spring on this lure. And it is a jig. But specifically, I want to talk about what jig I'm throwing in the spring to catch big bass. And the one that I'm throwing in the spring when I'm targeting those big females is what I call a full-sized, big profile jig. Um, when I look back on some of the classics that I fished in February and March, when I look back on springtime tournaments, springtime fun trips, consistently the biggest bass I ever catch come on that jig. And, you know, think about what is the mindset of that big bass in the spring, right? Especially that big female. Their mindset is, let's feed, let's, let's get some high protein meals in us before we have to go drop our eggs, right? That's the mindset. That female knows she's got a lot of work coming when that fish gets on a bed. And she wants to eat not a lot of little stuff, right? She doesn't want to expend a lot of energy in the spring eating little tiny shad, little minnows. She wants a couple big meals every day that are high protein. And to me, that jig is such a great imitator of that. Um, for sure, a big, full-sized, full-profile jig is a great imitator of a crawfish, right? Um, as that jig sets on the bottom, that skirt expands in the water, you've got a trailer on it, whether it's a chunk or a crawl, with those split arms, and, and the sheer size of that, that's representing a big crawfish. If you swim this same jig in the spring, maybe a green pumpkin, something with some more green pumpkin or uh, orange or tones in it, could look like a bluegill. Another big meal and that big full-size presence as you're swimming the jig, coming through the water, that skirt, big puff of that skirt, right? Looks like a big high protein meal. And I think that's the reason this is number one for me. More five to 10 pound bass in the spring I've caught on this thing. Specifically, I'm a big fan of the three eighths to three quarter ounce size. And the main thing I'm thinking about on picking the weight size of that full profile jig, by the way, this happens to be a missile jigs flip out, which is their full, full profile size jig. Three eighths, half and three quarter. Main thing I'm thinking about is depth of water and rate of fall. So for those shallow water scenarios, uh, zero to five foot, I love a three eighths. A three eighths jig with a big trailer on it, that full size skirt, it 
falls slow enough that the fish can get a look at it. Uh, you know, it, it parachutes down five to 10 foot, getting a little deeper. I like that half ounce size. I think the half ounce, a great size, gets to the bottom. You can maintain contact. And then as you get deeper, and there are times in the spring when I'm fishing 15, 20, even out to 25, that three quarter ounce size is a really good one. Again, using weight as a determiner of your depth of water. The second thing in picking the right size of that full size head, that, that head size, is rate of fall, ROF. And of course, your heavier jigs, the half and the three quarter, have a lot quicker rate of fall. In the spring, a good general rule of thumb for a full size jig is when the fish have really good uh, conditions to feed. I like a 3 8 right? When they're feeding, when they're eating, I like that slower fall, it draws them in. But when the fish are not feeding, when the fish are more in a funk in the spring, a cold front, clear water, heavy fishing pressure, I go to the bigger sizes to increase my rate of fall to get more of a reaction bite. In either case, light or heavy, that trailer is critical. And I'm calling it a full-size jig, not just because of the skirt size and profile of that jig itself, but also the trailer. And in the spring, I tend to go with the larger trailers. That's a Berkeley uh, Maxent chunk, the big Maxent chunk. And instead of threading it on, I punch it through. Little tip on that is I use a piece of broken power bait general, a piece of broken power bait worm as a spacer that keeps that trailer down. But look how big that profile gets when you hit, when you punch the chunk through the meat, not thread it. My other favorite trailer is a big crawl, you know, a big four or five inch crawl. This is one of my favorites. It's a Berkeley Chigger crawl, the four inch. I don't bite it down. I thread it on, I leave it full size. And in the spring, that bigger full-sized trailer on that full-sized jig make a big presence, a big package. That's going to look like a high-protein meal. And in the spring, you can't beat a big jig. That's my number one. Number two, whenever you talk about springtime, you've heard me and in, in other in the shops talk about this bait. And you got to have it in your top four for big springtime bass. And it is a lipless vibration. People call it a rattle trap. Uh, you got to have this tied on in the spring. Especially, let me, let me really hone in on this, especially when you're on the front side of the spring, right? The early spring. You're talking about water that's in the high 40s up to about 60 degrees before they get on the beds, right? Before they move on the beds. So high 40s to that 60 degree mark, that lipless is hard to beat. And I don't care if you have a lake or a river or a reservoir with grass or without, doesn't matter. That bait triggers bites in the spring. Once again, just like the jig, when I'm targeting big fish in the spring, I go with the bigger vibration baits, right? This is one of my favorites. This is a, a lipless vibration by Rapala called a rip and wrap. And I like those bigger sizes. This is the size number seven. So half ounce, uh, seven sixteenths, three quarter ounce, even a one ounce sometimes, bigger vibration baits are gonna get bigger bites. Um, the great thing about this lure in the spring is you can cover so much water. These are baits that you cast and reel in. You can uh, burn them straight back. You can yo-yo them. You can snatch them out of cover, out of grass and, and light cover. And they really elicit a reaction bite as well as covering water. Color-wise in the spring, I don't go crazy on my lipless vibrations. I carry three general colors. I carry crawfish patterns including red. I carry my chromes, chrome blue, chrome black for imitating bait and shad. And I carry chartreuse 
for imitating bluegill or yellow perch. So simple colors, bigger lipless baits, um, and these will trigger some of the biggest springtime bites you can get all year round. Uh, that red, before I go on the next one, is key in the spring. And I get asked that so many times. Why? Why are so many big bass in the spring caught on a red lipless, a, a red rattle trap, right? A, a red vibration bait. And the reason I believe is it's a real great imitator of a crawfish, a big crawfish. You heard me talk about it with the jig. Those big bass in the spring, they don't want a lot of little meals. They don't want to eat 20 times a day. They want to eat once or twice. They want a big high protein meal. And in the spring, when crawfish start to come out of that hibernation, right? The water's warming, they're getting more active. The crawfish are actually coming out of that winter slumber. A lot of them have a reddish or orange tone to them. Great match to that red lipless for those big bass. The other thing is a lot of spring has rain. You know it, spring showers, right? Spring rains. When that water gets stained or dirty or muddy, that orange red color stands out, it draws strikes, and it makes those big fat bass get aggressive. So lure number two for targeting big springtime bass is a big lipless vibration, especially in that red color. All right, you heard me talk about it. Spring coming out of winter, leading up to the spawn. Number three, I want to get to a lure that is a little more toward the back half of the spring, right? So now the fish have moved out of their winter holes. They're heading to where they're going to spawn. The water was in the 40s or 50s. Now that water's getting to the 60s. It's not quite spawning, but it's around high 50s, 60 degree mark, and those fish really start getting shallow. I have caught more big springtime bass, especially in the later half of the spring, with a big soft plastic than any other lure. Um, I've caught them on crawls and lizards and curl tail worms, creature baits, but this shape in particular is my choice for big springtime bass. And it's a soft stick bait. Once again, like the jig, like the lipless, I'm going with the bigger sizes. I'm not, I'm staying away from the four inch, the four and a half inch baits. I'm even going past the fives and I'm going to the six, seven, even eight inch baits. Uh, this is one of my favorites. It's a Berkeley Power Bait General. This is a six and a quarter inch and a lot of companies make that six to seven inch size soft stick bait. Look how thick and fat that bait is. Just a, a, a big profile, right? A big presence. We're gonna talk about rigging in a second, but look at the size of that thing. Think about when those big females are getting shallow for the first time. They're not quite spawning, but they're shallow. Nothing beats that big soft plastic, that big stick bait. Another one of my favorites, and this is a newer bait, it's the Berkeley Powerbait Flute Worm, and this is a 6.7 inch bait, almost seven inch bait. Once again, look at it, soft stick bait style worm. It's got a fat end, a skinny end, it's tapered to a little tail. You can rig it a lot of ways. When you fish that bait up shallow, especially when that water's warming up, those big females can't resist it. They want big meals, high protein meals, that imitates it perfect, okay? Um, you can rig these a lot of ways, but my two favorite ways to rig both these style baits are weightless wacky and lightweight Texas, okay? Let's start with the lightweight Texas. I love it, especially for this general. Basically all I'm using is a six or a seven aught VMC offset hook. I'm using a light tungsten worm weight. I'm using a 16th 
to a quarter ounce tungsten VMC worm weight, and I'm gonna leave it without a weight stop in conditions when I don't have a lot of cover. When it's a light cover, no sinker stop. I want the weight free, because there's not a lot of cover. This thing has a little more action. The weight's not impeding on it. When I'm light Texas fishing around cover, now if I'm fishing around wood or docks or lily pads or brush, I'm just gonna add a little weight stop to that small tungsten weight. Okay, so soft, big soft stick bait, Texas rigged, and big soft stick bait, wacky rigged. I love, 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 love these baits, wacky rigged in the spring. This is that uh, almost seven inch flute worm. Just it in my hand. Look, I'm not, it's not even in the water. You get an idea of the kind of action that has. And I like a bigger hook when I'm wacky rigging these big soft, soft stick baits. I like a two watt uh, VMC uh, Nico hook. It's a great style hook. It comes in an unweedless version without a guard. Great for open water. It comes with a weedless version with a little fluorocarbon two double guard on it. That one ot or two ot is perfect. I hook it right in the middle, weightless. If it's windy, I could put a little nail in the head if I want on that flute worm. It's got like a little cavity in the front there for that nail. And I'll fan cast this shallow where the fish will eventually spawn. So number three, more big bass in the spring for me have been caught on a soft stick bait, a piece of plastic, but those bigger ones, remember big fish, big meal, a lot of protein, go big in your lures. All right, and number four, the last one I'm gonna give you, and I, I have a bonus I'm gonna throw you at the end, but this is my last one in my four category, is a big spinner bait. And when I look back from the mid 80s, that was a long time ago, to now, this lure has stood the test of time, right? There's some lures that come and go, some lures that'll catch big bass and then they sort of get used to them. This is one that is always tied on at least one of my rods in the spring and it is a spinner bait. You heard me mention earlier about spring rains, right? Spring showers. With spring rain comes higher water levels and dirtier water. When you get those two things, and a lot of the country, you're, if you're watching right now from Oklahoma, the Midwest, Texas, Florida, the Carolinas, even up here in the Northeast, when that water gets higher and more stained, man, I don't know if there's anything to beat a big spinnerbait. And in the spring, I really like throwing these bigger profile spinner baits. Just like that big profile jig, I like throwing a bigger profile spinner bait. So I'm talking about half ounce, um, five eighths, three quarter ounce, bigger presence spinner baits. And when you look at the body of that thing, just like the jig, look at it. The head's bigger, the skirt's bigger, the blades are bigger, um, and in that same theory, we've been talking about it over and over, those big bass in the spring, they want to eat once or twice a day. They want a big bluegill, a big shad, a big perch, a big herring, right? They want to eat a big meal once or twice and get that protein. Build up that strength for the spawn. Well, look at that thing. That looks like a big bait fish to me. Um, on color, I keep it pretty simple. Uh, the cleaner the water, the more of those white translucent colors. The dirtier the water, the more I like to add color in the skirt and blades. Chartreuse, orange, white, colors that stand out a little bit. On blade style, real easy, simple rule of thumb. When that water's stained to clear, I prefer willow style blades. Gives me a little more flash plus a little vibration. When that water gets stained to dirty, and I'm talking about that ugly mud, that brown mud, I prefer Colorado style blades. So uh, real easy to change the blades on these baits. Um, and also the dirtier the water, the more inclined I am to add a trailer. 
And I like uh, a single grub. That's a Berkeley Power Grub, four inch. Uh, I like to use, and it just gives it a little more profile in the dirty water. When it's clean, more often than not, I don't add a trailer, but I do add a trailer hook, okay? Big spinner bait, vibration, flash, the ability to fish it through and around any kind of cover. This is a perfect springtime killer for those really big females. And I've caught so many big ones in the last 20 or 30 years on a big spinner bait. All right, there it goes. I promised you four. I gave you four of my favorite big bass lures for the spring, but I want to sprinkle in a little bonus for you. And this is like a number five, but I wanted to put it as a bonus because this is sort of a newer category for me. And I'd say just in the last five to eight years, this has become a player. And that's why I want to keep this one separate. And it is a swim bait, a swim bait. And when I thought about adding this, I had to do it. I, know that, I knew they were my four main lures, jig, lipless vibration, big soft stick bait, and a spinner bait. Absolutely, they're my top four. But I had to. I just had to sprinkle in a big swim bait. Um, for those of you that are swim bait fans, you know what a big swim bait can do to trigger the biggest bite of your life. And there's no better time to do it than in the spring. But just like all those other lure categories, listen to me. If you're chasing big springtime bass, put away those little tiny finesse swim baits, the three, the four inch, even the five inch baits. Put them away and go for those big ones. Uh, got a couple of my favorites right here. When we're talking soft swim baits, I love a big hollow belly style bait. This is a, a Berkeley power bait, a hollow belly swim bait. This is a six inch. You can get these things even bigger, but I want you to look at, look at the size of that thing. Once again, imitating a big shad, a big herring, right? A big bluegill, a big perch. That's a big swim bait. Um, and when those big females are eating, they want to eat a high protein meal. Look at that thing. The swim bait is, to me, even better when you have cleaner water. So we talked about a lot of dirty water scenarios with that spinner bait and that jig. But in the spring, if your water is clear, that swim bait is a killer. You could rig it with a jig head, which is great for open water. You can rig it with a weedless swim bait hook or a, a bladed swim bait hook. And this has become one of my favorites. This happens to be that VMC bladed swim bait hook. A six or a seven knot works great for those six or seven inch hollow bellies. So soft swim baits and big giant hard swim baits, glide baits. And again, the reason I put this as a bonus is I'm still learning myself about these baits. But if you put this in your hand and commit to it, you're going to get a few bites on it. And in the spring, those big females want a big meal. Look at that thing. Nothing beats those big hard swim baits. This happens to be a storm bait. It's a bait that Brandon Polinick designed. It's called an Arashi Glide. Um, it's a bigger bait. It's heavy, uh, but it has such a big, giant, natural glide to it. The interesting thing is you can actually get this bait to spin back on itself and face the fish. So a lot of times I'll reel it, I'll keep it steady, and I'll throw stutters into it and pauses. And when I do that, it has that big, nice S. And when I give it a stutter, it'll pop out. It'll turn on itself. Or if I reel and pause, it'll turn on itself. And that change of movement is what causes those big bass to hit it. You're going to see them following it, but change that movement, a pause or a stutter, to get those fish to react. Again, you're not fishing for 30 or 40 bites a day when you fish this, but if you're targeting big fish in the spring, try a big hard swim bait or a big soft swim bait, especially when that water's cleaner in the spring. Man, I hope you enjoyed it. It was tough to narrow it down 
to those four plus the bonus, those five choices. But without a doubt, I can say that your chances of catching a big bass in the spring are pretty good if you throw one of those five lures. Hope you enjoyed this edition of In the Shop. If you did, please do me a favor. Wait, for, wait, wait, don't go to the next video yet. Hit that subscribe button, mash that button down there. Subscribe to this channel. We've got great stuff coming to you every single week. If you're already a subscriber, tell your fishing buddies about Mike Iaconelli Fishing on YouTube. We got great content, educational content coming every single week. Hope you enjoyed this one. Good luck this spring. I hope you catch a big bass. Bye.